Austin Givens on the line right now, security uh, expert um, over at Utica College, cybersecurity in particular. Austin, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Uh, so uh, first on the uh, on the the six eight zero and the three one five and this change in the area code. Uh, my take on, on this, uh, and they're saying, well, you know, we've just you know we've expanded here, and a lot of more people have cell phones, and you know the area code uh, has just uh, reached its max. My take on this is a little bit different in that. I think it's these uh, like Magic Jack and it's Google Voice and it's, you know, these companies, and these scamsters are coming in and buying up huge lots of numbers and they're using them to, to scam our elderly and everybody else here. Um, what, are your, what are your thoughts? Well, that's certainly potentially part of it. Um, I know in the New York metro area over the years, they've gone through the same sort of expansion. The yeah. famous area code in the New York City area, of course, is 212, then they went to 646 and Outerlying boroughs have actually had to deal with that same dilemma as well. Uh, One thing's for certain, though, the number of landline phones, both in homes and businesses, has sharply decreased over the past 10, 20 years. Yeah. Um, So that does kind of raise an eyebrow about what's really behind this change. Uh, Yeah, you got to wonder because, um, you know, you have an increase in cell and a decrease in in landline. You'd think that it kind of would equal out. And then on top of that, what Manaski was talking about earlier is, you know, 518 area code, uh, Albany's not making this change. And you'd think that that's more of a metropolitan area than, uh, than Syracuse, the Valley, and Watertown combined. So, uh, I don't know. Interesting to, uh, to think about. Now, I have been keeping a, a, a log. I have been calling regularly to Time Warner Cable since I installed a, a cable into my new house and Internet because my Internet goes down. I'll be in the middle of a project, and all of a sudden, boom, I have nothing. Well, it's, it's at your end. We're showing the modem that works perfectly fine. And I'll say, yeah, because I've been on hold for 10 minutes, and now it's back up and running. So now we find the state coming in and saying, uh, Eric Scheidelman, uh, Schneiderman, saying that um, uh, that Time Warner has been doing this deliberately. What do you know about all this? Well, it's tough to say. I mean, certainly not only in our area, but nationally. Uh, large cable companies like Time Warner, like Comcast, uh, like Cox Communications have real chokeholds on local markets. The truth is that, unlike 25 years ago, say, large cable companies enjoy semi-monopolies over huge chunks of territory in the United States. So I certainly think that the cable industry could benefit from some increased competition. I think that would be a benefit to them, and I certainly think it would be a benefit to consumers. I mean, most folks, Bill, uh, if you talk to them and they have some sort of basic digital package, uh, are paying well north of 100 bucks a month for yeah. cable. Uh, yep. And there's something about that when you sort of sit by yourself and think about it at night uh, that doesn't seem quite right given how many other technologies we have to enjoy, like streaming Netflix or Hulu, other services like that. Um, so eventually something has to give here. So I think to the extent that the state can encourage competition among different cable providers, I think that will be a very good thing. One thing is for sure, when we travel to other markets, um, I always have my equipment with me because you never know. I'm always working, it seems. Um, Speeds are fast. They're fast when you go out of town. And it it makes you think, boy, it wouldn't be great if we had these same real high-speed internets here, the internet here. Certainly. And, again, I I think that would be ultimately a function of competition. You know, when you have multiple companies competing with one another, trying to offer you the best service. Uh, inevitably, you know, they have to install better in- infrastructure and prices really come down for consumers. That's a very healthy thing. That's a very uh, American thing. That's a function of good old free market yeah. economics. So yeah. I'm all for that. Works for gas stations, works for Internet companies. <laughs> you know, Austin, if I can ask, does this, uh, because obviously there is an ongoing changeover. The company has been sold Time Warner and it's now Charter Spectrum. Uh, is the state saying that this is the M.O. of Charter Spectrum and they've done this since they've purchased them, or does this date back to before they were even in the picture? I get the sense that the state is trying to get out ahead of this one. They're anticipating that consumers are going to see their cable bills creep up slowly over the next year or two, and they're just trying to get ahead of that and send a message to Time Warner Charter and saying, look, guys, we, we know your number here. Don't even think about it. Yeah. 
uh, and hopefully that will dissuade them from trying to turn up the dial uh, as far as prices are concerned. And, you know, nationally, similar types of things are happening, too, in the health insurance market. There are a number of very large health insurers that are trying to merge right now, and the U.S. Department of Justice is taking a very close look at them uh, because they're concerned about the potential impact on competition and, and hurting consumers. Um, now, philosophically, I'm not a big proponent of the government stepping in and telling companies what they can and can't do. However, I do think that competition is always a good thing for consumers, and it should be encouraged. Uh, I want to ask you about this. I'm not sure um, I didn't prep you on this, but uh, net neutrality, uh, the president's new choice for chairman of the Federal Communications Commission is Commissioner Ajit Pai, who we've had on the air several times here. He's a big fan of radio, a big fan of AM radio, and has been uh, instrumental in, uh, in really supporting AM radio stations around the uh, around the country to be able to compete with everything else. But he is, uh, 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 his take on this is, I favor an open internet and oppose Title II. Can you explain what net neutrality is and what uh, he's talking about when he says an open internet? Sure. So <clears throat> the idea behind net neutrality is that up until this point in history, all data on the Internet has been treated equally in terms of the time it takes to send and deliver that data. So, for instance, if you're on your phone, say, on an app like Facebook or Instagram or a news website, the data that you're seeing loaded into your web browser or loaded into that app all travels at roughly equal speed. The company that operates that app or operates that website can't pay for that data to move any faster to your phone. Moving away from net neutrality would mean that certain companies, organizations, government agencies could pay for their data to move faster through the pipes, so mm. to speak. And there are certain advantages to that. You know, if you think about emergency services, for instance, uh, messages from police officers and firefighters and EMS folks, those need to travel really fast because it's a life and death sort of issue. So if those sorts of agencies could pay for their data to move faster over the Internet, that might actually have a real public safety benefit. Yeah. But there are those on the other side who say, well, yes, I hear all of that, but this is also going to prevent smaller companies and smaller organizations, even smaller radio stations, for that matter, from starting up their operations and really gaining a foothold in the market. Yeah. So there are good arguments on both sides. Personally, I've always come down on the side of having companies actually be able to pay a little bit more for faster service. I, I fundamentally don't see a problem with that. I don't think it's going to be quite the issue that the opponents uh, of this argument make it out to be. How does the uh, the worry come in play where, uh, uh, they, well, you know what happens is somebody like MSNBC could pay to be able to get their information, which might be slanted to the left, out there, and when you, when you search something, you're going to get their stories and not maybe something from the right, or it could be vice versa. There's certainly the potential for that, but what I see more likely happening is that large media companies, let's take MSNBC or CNN or Fox, um, they are going to be able to pay to have their content move out faster. Uh, but I also think that's going to end up making download times a lot smoother and quicker for consumers. So we have to really look at both sides of this thing. Right. Uh, so I think for most of us, everybody kind of desires a little bit faster Internet speed, even if you have web pages and apps load very quickly. That's just sort of a natural human desire that I've observed yeah. in people who use the Internet. Yeah. Um, and so if allowing companies and organizations to pay for faster movement of data will encourage those faster download speeds, uh, we might actually want to think about how advantageous that could be. Uh, listen, I want to book you again for next week. I'd like to talk about uh, fake news and mm -hmm. all this, uh, th we're hearing the term fake news, but now how uh, Facebook says they're going to be able to prevent fake news from getting through. Um, I don't know how they're going to pull this off, but there's also a history of fake news, um, satire, um, uh, parody. Uh, there's a, this is a big topic, so I'd love to get you booked again next week to talk about that. Well, I don't know much about fake news, Bill, but I do know there is no fake news on WIBX. That's a very good point. <laughs> nice. Good man, Austin Givens. Austin, we'll talk to you next week. Thank you so much. Thanks, Bill. All right. Uh, good man there at Utica College.